Hi everyone, I've got another miniature here for you now with Boris Gelfand against Alexander Shabalov. It was played in Bermuda in 2004. Gelfand's a very strong grandmaster from Belarus and Shabalov is a many time American national champion. His rating was 26 23 when this game was played and Gelfand was at 27 on 9. So to get into the game anyway, it was a uh, Queen's Gambit declined with a semi slav defence as follows. And at this stage Gelfand played the aggressive G4, which has become mainline at top level play. It's similar to the Perenni attack in the Sicilian defence, where if the knight takes his pawn then the rook can come to G1 and there's strong threats down the G file for white. In this game the pawn wasn't accepted and play continued D takes C4. Then bishop takes c4, b6, e4, bishop b7, and e5, which seemingly wins a piece, but Shabalov had of course seen this coming and he plays c5, which means he doesn't lose a piece, but his problems are still far from over, as you'll see when the game continues. And e5 here is much stronger than, say, g5, because then knight h5, bishop b3, and b5, and black gets good counterplay in this position. So e5 is better, then came c5, and e takes f6, and bishop takes f3. Which is stronger than queen takes f6, trying to um, pick up the knight here. Because so after bishop e2, and bishop takes f3, g5, and the queen can't defend this bishop anymore. Can't move here, and they can't move here. So the bishop would fall anyway. So bishop takes f3 is the right move. Then came f takes g7 and rook g8. Queen takes h7. Knight f6. Attacking the queen and defending the rook. Then bishop to b5 check. King e7 and already the black king is under a lot of pressure. At the moment he's got no squares to move to. And Gelfand played bishop g5. So it's a very sharp position already with pins and pieces hanging all over the place. And bishop g5 is really the strongest move in the position. If queen h6 here, then after knight takes g4, queen h3, bishop takes h1, queen takes g4, c takes d4, and queen takes d4. Um, white really doesn't have enough compensation for his material deficit. He's a point down here in terms of material. and there's really no compensation at all, so bishop g5 is definitely the strongest move. Shabalov tried to counter with bishop to f4, which again is a strong reply, and much better than say for example c takes d4, because after queen h6, bishop e5, knight to e4 is strong. After bishop takes e4, f4, and this bishop, well, have to move away or it'll probably take this pawn but even then the uh, it's just terrible for black and it's a winning advantage for white and if instead of bishop f4 bishop takes h1 would lose the game immediately with queen h6 and it's an absolutely unstoppable attack so after bishop f4 came queen h3 which again is stronger than, say for example, bishop takes f6, f6, because then king takes f6, knight e4 check, bishop takes e4, queen takes e4, queen takes d4, and it's pretty much completely equal in this position. I mean, white's a pawn up, but this pawn is going to be very hard to hold on to. And, um, yeah, it's equal. It's, it's, I mean, it's not a clear cut situation, but the game continues. Continuation is much sharper with queen h3. Which leaves this uh, rook on pre, and after it gets taken, which really it has to be accepted really as a sacrifice. If bishop takes g5, then queen takes f3, c takes d4, rook d1, pinning this pawn to the queen, and white just gets very dangerous initiative here. So it's best to take the bishop, or sorry, the rook. And then came bishop takes f4, queen takes d4, and queen g3 which has in mind all kinds of threats like rook to d1 with uh, threats down the d file trapping this k 
king in the center and also bishop to e5 would be very strong so Shablov had to deal with this and he played really the best move knight e4 and after queen to h4 check came queen f6 which is completely forced really if knight f6 then rook d1 is very strong after queen takes h4 or f4 rook to d7 check and king e8 is the only move then rook d4 discover check from the bishop picks up the queen and if instead of queen f6 simply f6 then again rook d1 is very strong and Fritz recommends in this continuation just exchanging the queen for two minor pieces like so but after rook d3 is again winning for white so queen f6 is the best move and then came g5 and Shabalov cracked here and played queen f5 which lost the game a better move would have been just to take this pawn and try to consolidate a bit but with queen f5 Gelfand castle queenside and now his attack is very strong rook a d8 was played and after rook takes d8 king takes d8 is basically forced if rook takes d8 then knight takes e4 and after queen takes e4 g6 with a check from the queen f6 and then this pawn promotes to a knight to give check and keep the uh, initiative and after rook takes g8 queen to h7 check rook g7 has to be played because there's mate threats on d7 if the king goes anywhere else so rook g7 and then queen takes g7 king d8 and queen d7 is mate so at this stage the king has to recapture and then came bishop d3 from Gelfand which makes it impossible for black to break the pin that this knight is under against the queen it is uh, you know the queen has is tied down to the protection of the knight and it's um it's very uncomfortable he, he tried uh, rook takes g7 and then came knight takes e4 which is uh really it's winning now for white Black tried rook h7. If he plays bishop takes e4, then bishop takes e4, and if queen takes e4, then bishop c7 check wins the queen and the game. So he played rook h7, but then came bishop to c7 check, and Shabalov resigned because it's completely losing now. If king takes c7, then queen g3 check, e5 and knight f6 and the queen will have to move and afterwards the rook will fall and white will be a piece ahead and if after queen g3 king c6 then queen d6 check is easily winning king b7 queen to e7 check king c6 bishop to b5 check because after the king takes and knight d6 wins the queen so a brilliant game from Gelfand. I'll uh, replay it with the threatened squares highlighted just so you can see it from start to finish. Some very sharp play there. And it was game over in 25 moves. And a recurring feature really in these miniatures is that the king gets trapped in the center so if you can sacrifice material in your games and trap your opponent's king in the center that's really something to be aiming for yeah now it's all over after queen f5 that was the blunder of the game really game losing blunder so that's it I hope you enjoyed that please leave any comments or thoughts thanks very much